you can do the computer. I quite like the music scene in Brighton. It's very varied. Yeah, you know, it's progressive, it's organic. Um, you can't walk down the street without seeing someone wearing a guitar case, which is really nice. Brighton's always had a really great underground sort of musical community. It doesn't feel like an industry, really. Really varied, loads of stuff. Yeah, it's like... Open to all music. Everything. Every, every possible thing you can think of. You've got everything from, like, your proper thrashy metal to your new kind of, like, neo-soul and, and jazz stuff that's coming through quite nicely now. Noise, jazz. Grunge. Grunge. <laughs> metal. Singer, songwriter, acoustic. Spoken word. Country. <laughs> pop. Everything. <laughs> it's definitely changing and on the up right now. You can come from anywhere or speak any language or have any background or any upbringing or any belief system, but when you get out a guitar, you're still playing a guitar, you know, like anyone else. I work with a lot of bin bands, so I see everything from those metal bands to the, the neo soul and jazz. I think the power of BIM, the uni that I'm at, is is unparalleled really. I can't imagine leaving Brighton after I graduate actually. I think I'll stay. There's a lot of bands who are going through BIM at the moment who are pulling a lot of influences from the 80s and 90s. You know, bands who are still today heavily influenced by Portishead and that album Dummy came out so many years ago and bands today are still like, yep, yeah, I'm influenced by this, I'm, I'm going to do this but I'm going to do it in the 2018 way, it's, it's, it's great. Like, the stuff that comes out of Brighton is, is fantastic. I do like working with new styles that I haven't worked with before because there's a lot of things you learn. Like, I've been doing this for 17 years but I learn something new every single day. I'm Kieran, I'm a drummer. I'm Naz, I'm the singer. I'm Dan, play bass. Mm. I'm Reese, play the guitar. We met at uni, what class was it? Performance like... class or something. Uh, <laughs> Artist <laughs> development, that's yep. oh, yeah, that In our good. first year of uni, so that was like two and a half years ago. Bit dark, so like trip hop doom. It's very thing. rocky. Yeah, it's, yeah, almost, it's almost doom. It's almost yeah, metal sometimes. Dooms, yeah. It can be quite intense. And we've had comments like, "You sound like a mixture of Kate Bush, Portishead, and what's it one? Bjork." And then, "You sound like Amy Winehouse on acid." <laughs> <laughs> I find it really hard to connect with like popular genres, uh, popular music nowadays, like, I don't know, chart, most of the chart music, for example. I just want to, it's all kind of samey and everyone seems to be just following a, the trend and like the crowd and I kind of want to stare in a different direction, make something new that I enjoy listening to. Um, it's really nice just to not to... Play something that's say in four chords, yeah. or you know, it's something that you can just kind of dive into a bit more. Listening to Porter said it just completely changed my whole perspective on music, and I was like, oh my god, I want to sound. <laughs> I don't want to sound like them, obviously, because you know, it's to create something new. But I want to, I don't know, I was just heavily influenced by them. We we're finding it harder to slot in and get more recognition because of these other bands that are trying to sound like others and people will go to that where they won't go to something that's a bit more creative as such. I love the Green Door store because I've seen it carry filthy sweaty rock bands, I've seen it carry hip hop events, I've seen it carry spoken words, you know, it's an incredible location um, and it just feels so urban and underground. Prince Albert's really cool. Green door store. Hope and Ruins, one for me. Mm. It's just great. I'm torn between Green Door store and Sticky Wax. Because mm. I like the openness of Green Door store, but I like how underground the Sticky Wax is. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the, there's an interesting project called the Brighton Music Office, which is trying to map. Uh, what the the what the industry is, and it's the first time that ever anybody's ever really tried to map if there is an industry, rather than a load of venues and a load of bands and a load of promoters all working independently, but trying to understand how it all works together like a big jigsaw. So an industry requires a lot of logistics, not just sort of creative, not just places to play, but places to rehearse and places to buy instruments and places to, and also expertise in terms of production and stuff like that. 
there's plenty in Brighton. It's quite saturated with venues. Yeah. I think that can be a problem sometimes, purely because you kind of dilute your audience so much. There's so much choice. Yeah. You know, in a place where there are fewer venues and fewer nights happening, crowds are bigger, yes. you know, audiences aren't quite so tough. So maybe that could be seen as, as so a minus. There's so much choice that it's actually too much, almost. Sometimes I think that can be the case. Um, but, I mean, it's what you make it, really. So there isn't one recipe for success. So you can't be successful unless you've got a decent manager and a decent record company and uh, that understands the marketplace. Luck is so important. Right time, right place. There has to be a degree of talent and originality and, and personality, those three things. But so it would be a lie to say that the most talented, the strongest personalities and the most gifted people are the people who always win. That's not true. That's just not true. Targeting the right audience. Yeah. Sometimes it's down to luck, but then it's most of it is hard work as well. Mm. It's hard work, but the luck is full down to who shows up and where it's at. Yeah. yeah. At the right time. But there is a market for it, we just got to pinpoint yeah. it, haven't we? Yeah.